Welcome to another edition of the Infamous Hour. I am your host, the Infamous Amadeus, reporting live from Southern Florida. It's 80 degrees. Shout to my people in New York. They're getting smacked in the face with ice cubes. The size of deers falling out of the sky. Flight got canceled. Somehow, Shaw Boogie's managing to get back. I don't know how. I'm flying out of Fort Lauderdale, though, sir. Are you really going back in the blizzard? I'm flying out of Fort Lauderdale, and my flight gets canceled. But for some reason, he's flying out of Miami, and he's still able to make it back home. Now, I'm not complaining. <laughs> I'm not complaining because it gives me another day to chill here in Florida, okay? It's a beautiful place, too. You're in the right it place. Is. Follow me on all social media platforms at the infamous Amadeus, and make sure you listen to me on Sirius XM Hold Shade on, bro, 45. Really going back in the blizzard. Yes. The only thing on your mind is panic, 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 <laughs> panic, panic. <laughs> <laughs> Sirius XM Shade 45 for a single Thursday, noon on the east, 3 p.m. for the throwbacks. And can't come here to Florida without uh, tapping it with my guy. We came down to shoot the video. Yeah. This guy's been fly since the 90s. <laughs> I'm going to find tried, out today man. how tried. many R&B singers he done tapped. Oh, man. And don't, and don't give me the generic answer either, okay? It's the infamous hour. I'm a gentleman, bro. How many baby mamas? Two. Been tapped out here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dude. How many classic records we got? Tony Sunshine, welcome to the Infamous Hour. Appreciate you, my brother. <laughs> so uh, I, we came down here to shoot this uh, new music video you said. It's a different sound for you, acoustic. Yeah. Uh, it's a different look. Um, yeah. You know, you, you've put out some aggressive stuff recently. Um, yeah, man, you know, uh, I'm emotional. You know, you and I speak about that behind the scenes. So I'm an emotional individual and. and so, you know, the way I express myself and what keeps me out of trouble is just keeping it in the booth and on wax and yeah. things like that. And so, you know, um, a lot of angry music. Yeah. You know what I mean? A lot of angry music. But we can also say that it's authentic. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because Tone Sunshine is not a, a, a regular R&B singer. So anybody that knows Tone Sunshine has been following my career knows that I've been the same since day one. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? The way I walk, the way I talk, the way I express myself has been the same. It's not like I'm following no trends. Yeah. I'm just being who I am. So when I make uh, angry music, it's not my best music, mm -hmm. but it's me being authentic and staying true to who I am. It, I call it uncompromised music. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so to to... To the consuming ear, it might not be appealing because they don't understand where I'm coming from or who I am. You know what I mean? True fans and and and, and people that have followed my journey since day one understand it. You know what I mean? So, and it's just me trying to find my niche and find my way and trying 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 to trying to wake, make my way back into today's society because I come from a different era as well. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, how, how do we relate to today's society? Because as you said, it's, it's much different. Uh, growing up where you grew up at and the time you grew up, there was a certain, like, code of honor, morals, principles. And it kind of feels like now it's just kind of gone with the wind. Like, how do you navigate? Um, it's definitely all over the place. They, 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 they ain't really no morals and no honor amongst thieves and shit like that. But this is hip-hop. Yep. You know what I mean? And hip-hop has always been a genre of music where you could go express yourself and you don't really have to be that individual you talking about, you kind of create a persona. So for a lot of us coming from our era, we was raised by the wolves and the gangsters, and we was raised by, 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 by people that instilled morals in us and showed us the ropes. Today's generation was just raised by hip hop artists, listening to music and mimicking and doing what they heard and things like that, you know what I mean? So it, it's very different. Today's generation don't have morals, but at the same time, I respect what they're doing. I respect their sound. I respect what they bring to the table because I remember when we was young, I remember when we was coming into the game, we was Latinos. We was different. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And we was a whole crew of Latinos. It wasn't like it was just one of us or yeah. two of us. You know what I'm saying? It was a whole crew of us. And so, you know, our sound was a little bit different. You know what I mean? Because we come from a, from, from, from a part of the Bronx that's just outside the box from everybody else. You know what I mean? And so 
it was hard to be accepted. We had to fight. We had to make a way. We had to prove a point. You know what I mean? Some of us are still trying to make right with the points we was trying to prove back then. All the bridges we burned and the people, you know, because we was passionate. So when I look at what these young kids is doing and I hear everybody else calling them mumble rap and, you know, disrespecting their craft and taking away from what they doing, it takes me back to a place when we was trying to break barriers and we was trying to be respected. And so, you know, although a lot of them are misguided and a lot of them don't have a clue about what the real world is about, they just mimicking each other, yeah. one another. A lot of them are listening to, you know, some of our favorite rappers because I'm not going to downplay them or talk crazy about them. I just think they need to be more conscious and more aware of the things they talk about. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because in today's era, our young kids... They don't have a problem with letting you know they pop pills. They don't have a problem with letting you know they drink lean. They don't have a problem with talking about coke and meth. And they don't have a problem with just, you know, being drug addicts. And that's due to the music we listening to today. You know what I mean? But at the same time, it's appealing. It's, 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 it's a sound. So I respect a lot of shit that these young kids is doing. At the same time, it's a little bit different for us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's, I dare say is a sad generation. You know what I mean? Like like these kids now are more depressed. Everybody's everybody's depressed and everybody's is is, is popping zannies because you know they, it's just a different era, man. I can't explain it. Yeah. But, w would it be a fair assessment to say because a lot of these kids grew up listening to late nineties, early two thousands hip hop? When you look at like a younger generation, I mean would it be a fair assessment to say that some of that content came from that music? I mean, Raekwon said that, you know, he smoked the woolly to his eyes bled and... Yeah, but the way he put it... Was different, of course. Right, the way he put it was very conscious and, 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 and it was creating awareness. You know what I'm saying? And he was he was also really fly with it. He was, he was, he was very careful how he put it out there. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't saying that it was cool. He wasn't saying that it was a wave. Was telling you his story, telling you where he was from, where he was at at one point in life, and where he is now. You know what I'm saying? Um, there's a lot of rappers from our generation that have even joined the bandwagon of today's era, and they're not, you know, they're not conscious, and they making it cool to drink lean and pop pills. And you know, I come from a place where, <clears throat> very late in my life, I I, I, I I walked the walk where I, I didn't think I was going to go. I went to a place I think I didn't think I was going to go, and I went through an addiction for like six or seven years of my life. So I know that life. I know the suffering. You know what I mean? So it pains me when I hear some of our, our elders and some of our, our OGs and shit like that condoning, you know, certain things in the music and all that. And so, like I said, when I listen to it, it sounds dope. It sounds good. I turn up to it. But at the same time, I'm conscious of what I'm listening to. And I'm like, damn. Yeah. My son is listening to this shit. You know, my nephews are listening to this shit. My niece is listening to this shit. My, my, my brother's son is listening to this shit. Your kids is listening to it. And so it's kind of like romantic, ro romanticizing it. You know what I mean? Um, television has become really crazy with yeah, no, it's you know ridiculous. What I'm saying? With, with with romanticizing uh, drug abuse and things like that, and some of them might say it's creating awareness, but at the same time, how much awareness can you be creating? Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's every episode, it's every is it. So in today's society, it's just become a, 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 a full blown romantic situation with, with with drugs and hip hop. Our era, we had to hide that shit. That shit was frowned upon. It wasn't cool. You had to be fly. You had to be clean cut. You had to be about your money. Today, if you ain't popping pills, if you ain't depressed and you, and, 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 and you ain't talking about it in your music, you might not get a record deal. You might not get radio play. You know, you know what I'm saying? They might not give you a bag to promote your shit. You might get overlooked. We just need to be more conscious and more aware of, of, of what it's about. And I'm not trying to be a hypocrite because I said I was there, right? Mm -hmm. I was there. It was a good time. I'd be lying to you if I said it wasn't a good time. But it was a good time when it was a good time, and then came the suffering. Yeah. And then came the and then came the bullshit. So we just need to be more conscious in our music and create more awareness and, and water that shit down now. 
It was cool. It sound good. You did it. It came. It went. Let that shit slide now. Let's go back to being cool. Because being sober and being fly is cool. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Being sober, being fly is cool. Being conscious and letting your friends know that they ain't doing the right thing and they looking ugly in the face right now is cool. And that's all, you know. Not taking away from what they doing. Have fun. Create your genre. Do what you doing. Create your wave. But at some point, be conscious that you're going to crash. I don't give a fuck about how much money you got, who you standing with, who you know. At some point, you're going to crash. And that's just the bottom line. Point mm -hmm. blank, period. Mm -hmm. During the pandemic, we got to do like a, uh, like a Tony Sunshine versus... Like Tony versus Sunshine type of it was like you versus yourself and you pulled out a lot of records that I didn't even realize like what like were which in one? the catalog. I mean like which one? Diddy, Swiss Beats. I mean, people know there's an Eagle record, obviously, but there, there were some records in there that was like, okay. So like where is all this music? Cause it kind of feels well, like it's spread out a little bit. What happens what well, that's a good question. So what happens is, you know, um and again with all humbleness and not tooting my horn or nothing like that, I was like a one-of-a-kind individual when I first stepped on the scene. There was nobody like Tony Sunshine. You know what I'm saying? Latino from the hood with an edge coming from a gangster crew. You know, um, pretty boy saying, don't take no bullshit from nobody, tattoos, this, that. And so um, with the noise that Pun made and, and, and with the respect that Fat Joe had, um... It, the name took a life of his own. You know what I'm saying? And so the industry started talking because the music was good. You know what I mean? And I was being ushered in by some guys. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and, and, and um, so the idea of signing me and the idea of having a one-of-a-kind individual was always good to the record label. But the music, it was kind of like, is it going to work? Because now you got a Spanish kid singing like Michael Jackson, you know what I mean? And, and so the way we was trying to present it, or the way I was trying to present it, because like I said, I've always been, a, when 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 R&B singers were wearing shiny suits and ties and top hats and giving out roses and stuff like that, I was wearing constructions and baggy jeans and hoodies with three chains with my hat to the back and I was getting in trouble in the streets, you know what I'm saying? And so I was different and Latino. And I guess that idea of, of, of what it was, they wanted to be the first to. So I signed to Loud Records, I think it was 1999 going into 2000. And this is after Capital Punishment. No, I'm lying. Excuse me, because uh, God bless the dead. Big bro had, had, had passed away already. Um, and he was gone for quite some time. So I think it was like... 2000, mid 2000, um, Joe secured me a deal over at Loud Records. Now, now, what, what, this is Loud Records on the decline, right? I mean, looking back at it now, this is Loud. I, I, I'm, 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 you know, I wasn't, I wasn't well aware of what was going on yeah, back yeah. then. You know, I'm a young kid coming from the hood. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm very, 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 very rough around the edges. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so, a big bag looks good to me. Know what I'm saying? I come from nothing. I come from the shelter systems, and I, I come from the streets. And you know, I seen a lot growing up. And when I finally landed in the projects, it was Vietnam. And so, you could imagine. You know what I'm saying? Landing in in in, in forest projects in the South Bronx in 19 uh 1990. In 1990, it was a sick time. You know what I'm saying? So now, uh. Becoming a teenager, becoming of age, being around some guys, you know, but I was super rough around the edges, and it doesn't mean because I was around them guys, I was eating like them guys. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, um, I wasn't thinking about doing my due diligence and paperwork, and I wasn't thinking about, you know, studying my craft. I was thinking about, oh, shit, the bag that's coming. I'm about to get a bag, and I'm about to be as fly as everybody else, and I'm about to take care of my people, and, you know, that's what I was thinking mm -hmm. about. So I wouldn't know, you know what I'm saying? I, I didn't know if they was at a decline. I don't know what was going on. 
I know that I was very grateful that Steve Rifkin, you know, gave me a shot, and I was grateful that Joe secured me the deal. So, um, yeah, we gave we 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 produced a pretty amazing album. The album was stupid for that time, for that era. The album was crazy. Um, shout out to Cool and Dre. You know what I mean? I flew them down from 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 Miami. They were supposed to be out there with me for like a week and a half, two weeks. They ended up staying for like forever. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We got them a, 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 a an apartment in Lexington Ave. Like you know what I'm saying? A condo on, a, and they ended up staying with me and and that time we produced an amazing album they ended up producing a bunch of crazy records for joe and they went on to 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 produce for everybody else not saying that they wasn't producing before me because they was they was producing for a lot of people out here but just saying that you know they 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 had a lot to do with creating the tony sunshine sound as well you know what i mean so um we created an amazing album uh during the process of the album getting mixed and mastered i believe know Steve Rifkin was going through what he went through and then the, the label went down uh, about two and a half to three weeks later we get a phone call that yo we heard Tony Sunshine is a free agent and we want him you know what I'm saying and we went I think uh, no I'm lying I'm lying. There was a situation on the table for Cool and Dre and Tony Sunshine at Jive, but I think the way we made it was so that the only way I signed the Jive was if they gave uh, Cool and Dre a label deal. Okay. And they ended up giving Cool and Dre a super duper dope label deal. They deserved it. Mm-hmm. It was amazing. And so I signed to Epidemic under, Jive. You, under Terror Squad Epidemic. Okay. Jive. Know what I mean? All right, so, so there's three. It's a three tier situation. So right. Cool and Dre has their own right. situation. And right. So Cool and Dre is managed by Terror Squad. Okay, so Terror Squad's management. Terror Squad at this is time. management. Okay. Yeah. And Tony Sunshine signed to Epidemic, which was Cool and Dre. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then Jive, and then we did the Jive thing, which was amazing. You know what I mean? Um. I think that Jive had a different idea of who Tony Sunshine should have been, and. Mm-hmm. They had, you know, like, uh, they had a lot of big acts up there doing their thing. They had, they had just signed young Chris Brown, and they knew what they had in their hands and yeah. things like that. And so, I, 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 you know, according to what I know and what I believe, they wanted me to go more of that type of direction. And I was thinking more, you know, not to bring his name up or none of that, but I was thinking more R. Kelly. I was thinking more Genuine and them cats and okay. things of that. And, you know, I'm a bad like, boy. Like sing rap. Sing rap. And, yeah. and and so I was already doing that. You yeah, know what you I mean? Right. I was already, you know, the guys in my hood and all that, way before they started calling Trey Songs Trigger, on East Tremont and Cretona, some of my guys, that's what they would call me, Trigger. Yo, sing the Trigger style, Trigger style, Trigger style. And I'll start sing rapping. You know what I mean? Before anybody even... Not to say that I invented it or made it up, but from where, I, where I'm from, mm-hmm. I'm the only nigga I know that did it first. Yeah. Where I'm from. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, I was already doing that type of style, and I was, I was creating. Even my guys, when I was singing for my guys on my team, they would tell me it wasn't the wave. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Nobody's excluded, in, any, except for Pun. Nobody's excluded. Everybody told me it wasn't the wave. It's never going to work. You know, it's that. And my thing would be like, yo, but Lauren Hill, what you mean? Mm-hmm. But Missy Elliott, what you talking about? Like, there ain't really no male dudes doing it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the way I'm trying to do it is different. I'm trying to do you mean it with like, an edge. Like being a singer and a rapper. Sing rapper. Yeah. Sing but like, rap like, at like the same really time. spitting verses. Verses. Of, yeah. You know what I mean? Kinda like 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 take what what kinda like take what Nate Dog was doing and mm-hmm. Bone Thugs and combine that shit but make it my own. And that's what I did. And I, I I I recorded a bunch of records and I played it for a bunch of people. You know what I'm saying? And I know it was fire. <laughs> mm-hmm. I know they heard it, but it was different. And they didn't understand it. So they would tell me, nah, that's not the wave. Singers don't rap and rappers don't sing. You know what I mean? And, you know, so 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 that was that. But anyway, I think that um, they had a different direction. And so we parted ways. And then after that, you know, um, Sony came and knocked on the door, and I went over to Sony, and I was signed to Sony, 
And after that, it was TVT. And after TVT, it was, you know, UBO. Mm -hmm. And after UBO, and it was just, you know. So I'm blessed. I can't complain. You know what I mean? If I, if I complained, some of the things I went through is, is my own doing. And some of the things that I went through is due to politics. And, and some of it is just being misguided. You know what I mean? So I mix all of that, I put all of that together and just call it wisdom. You know what I mean? And 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 and, and I'm at an age where most my say is almost over, but they can suck my dick. <laughs> <laughs> Respectfully. You know what I'm saying? I, I I created a wave in New York City where the motherfuckers wanna Admit it or not, I created a wave. I made it cool for Spanish niggas to be in the club looking fly. Yeah, facts. Me and the team. Me and the team. But I pat myself on the shoulder for that one because I remember going in the club when I was young and it wasn't cool to be a Spanish nigga and be fly. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, the Jimmy's Bronx Cafe days, I was taught by the best. I was raised by the flyest. You know what I'm saying? And so that's instilled in me. And I don't know how to not be fly. Even if I'm wearing a $2 t-shirt and a $4 pair of shorts, you got to make it look a certain kind of way. So, you know, the way the way my guys projected themselves and presented themselves is what was instilled in me. And that's how I always present myself. So anytime we went to the club, you know, and I, I want to say this respectfully. Of course, yeah. I want to say this respectfully. Anytime I went to the club... The Spanish dudes was like looking corny a little bit, you know what I'm saying? And 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 so we was always in some shit because I ain't like the way my guys was being treated, you know what I mean? And so little by little, you know, we created a wave to where it took a life of its own. I went to Puerto Rico to shoot the hundred percent record, the hundred percent video, Chris Robinson, um, Steve Rifkin was out there, Gabby was out there with us, you know what I'm saying? Um, and not taking none away, they fly. My my people were fly, you know what I'm saying. But on that beach that day, we had Daddy Yankee, we had Nikki Jams, we had Evie Queen, we had the Buddha Family Temple. They came through to show love, you know. And we have the whole nation, the whole reggaeton nation there. Now this is before this uh, is before reggaeton the, kind of popped. This is off. about. Six, seven years before Ray yeah, Tone yeah, popped, popped off. off yeah. You know, and um Is this after the Nori record? I forgot what year, the Nori and Nina Sky. Uh is that after? It's way before. Nori yeah. that that Nori's record, like oh five, right? Like, yeah, that record came that record came way later. Shout yeah. out to Nori, shout out to Nina Sky. That was a dope record. Mm -hmm. Um you know, again, and I say that to say again, we created a wave. Yeah. We created a wave where people were able to cross over and work with Latino, real Latino artists with the 100% record because, you know, let's let's keep it real. It's a crossover record. Yeah, super crossover. So anyway, we have all those people at, at the video shoot, and, and, and they were fly, but they were fly in their own way. You know what I'm saying? They had, you know, like the curly tops with the blonde streaks and the skin tight, you know, like uh, Levi's and, you know, the... the flowered shirts and shit like that and we out there with the Sean John shorts with the constructions and the high socks and the t-shirts with four chains hat to the back so it was very different you know what I'm saying um I say that to say that after we left that beach things weren't the same the style changed you know what I'm saying next thing you know and shout out to them shout out to who they are because they they fly you know what I'm saying? Uh, they kings in their in, in, in their world, and 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 they're kings to me. But everybody turned into young Tony Sunshine. You know what I'm saying? The Caesars, the the Yankee hats, the white T-shirts, the the chains. The club scene started looking a little different in New York City and the Bronx. And, yeah, and you know this, what I'm and saying? this is with the, the with the Spanish guys. I mean, and this is to this day. Probably still the biggest hip hop Latin crossover record. I mean, when this record comes on, the room changes. Like you don't want to perform after this record. Respectfully, Inf, this record is so huge, and it and, it, and 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 it did so much great for me. I performed this record so much that sometimes I don't even want to perform it anymore. Mm. Like yo, because because, because it, is, it is the go to song even over. Uh, the Lumi D record? 
no matter what. Yeah, this is the record. Like so, period. so, so again, this record defined my career and who Tony Sunshine is or was to the fans mm-hmm. or to anyone, the producers, the writers, the rappers, the singers, the anyone that came to Tony Sunshine. That's the type of vibe they wanted, and to me, it was like it, it, it was it was. Flattering, but at the same time, it's like I'm an artist. I'm, I'm an R&B singer. This is what I do. You know what I mean? So they would come in the studio to play me music, and everything was a Caribbean-type hip-hop beat and stuff like that. And that's dope. Again, I started off singing salsa music. I sang with Celia Cruz. I sang with Tito Puente. I sang with Eddie Santiago when I was 6, 7, 10 years old. You know what I'm saying? In, in, in the Spanish Harlem 4th of July festivals. Rafi Sabatelli, Su Charanga, they would take me out there all the time. So I'm cultured in that. But when I landed in the projects and I heard this, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And Hip-hop I, sound. And, and I was in grandma, and my mom was cleaning out the crib. She was about to throw the, the A-tracks out and, and shit like that. And I asked if I could keep them. I went to the Salvation Army, bought myself an A-track play. It didn't work. But, you know, when we was little kids, we were so poor that all we had was to take shit apart and put it back together. Yeah. We made that work. Mm-hmm. I popped that A-track that the, the A-track in, and, you know, I heard Lionel for the first time. You know what I'm saying? I heard Ray Charles for the first time. I heard, you know, uh, 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 Gladys Knight and Pitts mm-hmm. for the first time. I heard, You know, I heard this sound, and I was like, yo, what's this? And I started mimicking them. And so I fell in love with the sound and not this, that, you know, it's not that I hated this, but I wanted to do this now. This is, this is, this blew my mind, this sound. The riffs, the singing, the high notes, the music, the, and I wanted to do that, you know, and that's what I fell in love with. And I think that Pun was one of the, 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 one of the only individuals out of a handful of individuals that understood that, respected my talent for what it really was, and then look at me as just a Latino with a voice. He looked at me as a motherfucker that could sing. This nigga could sing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so we would, you know, he believed in, in my talent so much that we would get on, around cats like RL at the time from Next, and mm-hmm. he was amazing. And we would get around cats like, uh, um, we would get around a bunch of different super duper R and B acts, and Punter be like, "Yo, what's up, yo?" She know my man to bust your ass and singing, right? I'm a whole nobody. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like a I'm like a whole nobody, wet behind the ears. I'm like 96 pounds. You know what I mean? They, I got a curly fucking pushback. You know, we we straight out the hood from the pro. We poor. We coming up. And he'll make me sing with dudes, and he'll make me sing with the best of them. And then, you know, when we leave from there, pun look at me and be like, yo, you really sing, though, nigga. <laughs> like, you really sing. I'm glad you made me smack the shit out of you in there. <laughs> <laughs> Word. That, that, that's funny. You know, as a young uh, journalist, or even before I became a musician, I always found it weird that, um, like, Puerto Ricans being as artists in a black hip hop culture, we're struggling to find acceptance because being from New York, being from the Bronx, we always identify as one. Like, you know what I mean? Like we identify with African Americans as one. That's a particularly fact. Puerto Ricans and and, That's a, always and, my and argument. black people. And I, I think outside of the country, they don't kind of understand it. Like even being down here, like how could you identify that? We grew up in the same neighborhoods. We grew up with, with Mrs. This person, that person. We'll but especially, sugar. well, especially coming from the projects in the especially, South Bronx. I mean, especially, forget about the South Bronx. Let me stop doing that. Yeah. Let me start, especially coming from the projects anywhere in the, mm-hmm. in the world. You know what I'm saying? Where minorities come from. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, different for us. I always found that weird, like, why... We grew up, you know, I grew up next to Miss Tay and John John and Roy and you know what I'm saying? Downstairs, Black Sam and mm-hmm. his son Troy and Nene and you know what I mean? I think, I think, I think, I yeah. think I think one of my first kisses was with, 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 with Shanifa, you know what I mean? <laughs> I, I ain't lying, that's a real name. So, I mean, we come from a place where, but not everyone 
is cultured that way. Yeah. Even, 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 there's even people that live right across the street from you that frown upon it. You know what I'm saying? Um, we've always been those people that, well, my team, Terror Squad in itself, we've never been on that wave, yo. We've never been on a segregation type wave. We've never been, you know, um, We had Dominicans. I don't want to name people because I'm I'm on that wave. You know what I'm saying? But we had a Dominican, we had a Cuban, we had Remy, we had Getty, we had Prospect, who's half Spanish. You know our crew is really diverse. You know what I'm saying? They ain't this ain't this ain't all Puerto Ricans and all black or all this is really diverse. We really for the people. You know what I mean? And so. We don't look at it that way, but the world is different. World is, they're, not, they're not really grown in, in that type of environment. Now, any person who's ever created music or has any common knowledge of putting a song together, you can quickly tell by listening to the Yeah Baby project that this some of this content was kind of catered towards you, and you didn't kind of make enough appearances on it. Like, as I felt as a journalist, like, it's so hard. I kind of felt like that was so, catered to so, you, so, some of the records on them. And shout, know, out, I, shout out to Lord Seer. Shout out to Big Bro Lord Seer. Uh, he's on the intro of Yeah, Baby. Um, and he'll kill me yeah, if, Lord, I, don't, Lord, if, yeah, if yeah. I don't mention that. So I remember Lord, so I, Lord I, Seer. I, re, I, remember Lord clear, I remember clearly Lord yeah. Seer coming in to do that skit. And yeah. I remember yeah. intro. I remember kind of like, you know, watching him do it. And I had never seen anyone use different voices and things like that in the studio. And I was like, holy shit. Like, yo, he's killing this shit. Yeah. He's actually doing different voices. So shout out to Lord C.A. He smashed that. Uh, what was the question again? The Yeah Baby Project. Because I kind of felt like just so, listening to so, it, you should have so, been on it more. So, or that was the idea. And maybe so this is one of the first times and most likely the last time we're going to talk on this. Because mm -hmm. I'm one of those dudes that don't really speak on on certain things, you know, in, in interviews and things like that but i had a lot to do with that creative process mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying um the yeah baby album songs like 100 percent uh it's so hard i'm laughing at you uh did just a bunch of different things on there and again just being young and 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 just wanting to be in the game and chasing the bag and things like that and and so i was around my family you know what i mean i wasn't thinking about publishing and points and Getting credit, or at least, or at least credit. Credit. You know what I mean. For for, for the writers. For uh, just yeah, just coming yeah. up with ideas and and and, yeah. and being a part of the creative process and giving mm. lines here and there and coming up with the entire hook and you know things like that. And so I think I got a, a flat fee or something like that. They gave me a flat fee and things like that. And I signed a work for hire uh, paper and almost like a contractor, almost like a contractor. And, yeah. and so here I am years later and I don't get no, no, just doing credit for my creative, uh, process and anything, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? That has to do with the team, but I don't blame that on anyone. I blame that on myself for not being observant. And I blame that on my lawyer for allowing me to sign the contract. And, and, and I look at it as we were all young. We were all coming up in the game, and a lot of us didn't know whether we thought we knew what we was doing, and it seemed like a lot of us knew what we were doing. Nobody knew what we were doing, and everybody was getting jerked. You know what I'm saying? So it is what it is. But, yeah, I had a lot to do with that process, and I was taking off a lot of records after Pun passed away. You know, I think Pun's idea for the Yeah Baby album and throwing me on those records and allowing me to be a, pro a, a part of the creative process was a, a way of ushering me more into the game and bringing light to my mm -hmm. my creative ability and my, my talent. But when he passed away, it turned into a political situation and, you know, get the guys that's, 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 that's hitting right now and the mm -hmm. guys is lit. And I respected that. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, I had to go in the studio and work with them. You know what I mean? To show them how to sing the record. So that was an experience in itself. You know, going in the studio with Darnell Jones for two or three days and, you know, so... On, on the It's So Hard record, all the backgrounds and all the oohs and ahs and all that is me. Mm. And so what they did so was... So you're still on the record. I'm still on the record, but what they did was they took one track of Darnell Jones singing and they laid him on top of me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so now he's the lead and all the backgrounds and, and all that. You. you 
know what I mean? And, and shout out to Darnell Jones. He was real dope, very down to earth. You know what I mean? Uh, we had a great conversation during that time. And, 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 you know, just the experience in itself, I have no complaints. I ain't, you know what I mean? I'm right where I'm supposed to be, right where God wants me to be. After an experience like that, I could imagine it must have been like writing opportunities um, for other artists or just people that are in the know. Because sometimes like this political stuff is always behind the scenes. So a and is like, look at someone like Neo. Look at someone like, um, who, who else? Oh, the Dream, for example, right? They, uh, they wrote a lot of records and were there writing opportunities after that? Uh, I went on to get a few writing opportunities, but again, so I'll say it again. So uh, including my team and a lot of people that, I was surrounded by my idea of the type of artist I wanted to be and the type of music I wanted to present. They weren't uns they, they were unsure of it. You know what I mean? They didn't believe. So my team and my they 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 you know it was very it was very sketchy and it was very few times where they gave me the opportunity to be creative. You know what I'm saying? And when they did, we hit. You know what I'm saying, and, and 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 so it is what it is. Yeah. You know what I mean. Oh, fast forward now. Look at what everybody else doing. Mm. They doing exactly what I what the fuck I was trying to explain to them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. You can't you can't you can't get a deal if you can't. As a rapper, you can't get a deal if you can't hit a note or at least hold the melody. Unless you with, unless you nifty with the fucking auto tune, mm -hmm. and at that you you got to be able to create a song that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, my dick, like I said, Nate, people like Nate Dog, mm -hmm. people like Bone Thugs. That one song Montel Jordan put out. This is how, how we, we do it. And he's it. eating forever on this record, by the way. The huh? Montel Jordan record. Like the record is forever. He's eating forever. I just saw him with Shaq. He's like cashing out. Me and Joe was just talking about this. Yeah, he's me and Joe was talking about this, and you know, me and Joe agreed that that might be the greatest song ever recorded ever in hip hop. Think so? I mean, you know, it's a figure of speech. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You you know, that's kind of like giving them not saying it's the, but when we say that is a figure of speech, and it's kind of like but giving it, them his props on that record. It's it's definitely the top. Three. How many weddings, Sweet Sixteens, Quinceañeras, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. how many block parties, yeah. how many clubs, how many places you've been to that they don't play that song? Everywhere. So songs like that changed my life. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to make records that catered to the streets and edge, and but I wanted to sing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so when Pun, <laughs> Pun came to me, it was like, uh, I want to give you a solo song. On my album, that mm -hmm. shit meant the world to me. Like a solo, I want to give you a solo on my not the Terror Squad compilation and none of that. I want to give you a solo on my album. So I was like, "Holy oh, shit!" I think it was R and B type vibe, but you know, turn up this that. And your man was like, "Nah, chill, slow down." Yeah. This is the type of record I want you to make. Make a song about your dick and people on your dick. And I'm looking at him like, "Huh." He's like, yeah, make a song like this, this, that. He gave me the direction, and so I picked the beat, you know what I mean? And, and he gave me the direction, and I went in the studio, and I laid the song, my dick. And, you know, I wrote the song. I, I laid it the best way I could and played him the song, and he thought it was the greatest thing on earth. And I'm telling him, yo, bro, this is going to ruin me. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, yo, you know, man. That's because you're a small boy and I'm a grown man. <laughs> funny, I swear man. to God, that's what the nigga told me, bro. The nigga said, watch this. So I right, cool. So I play him the joint or whatever. He loves it. He thinks it's amazing. I leave the studio. He stays behind, you know, of course. Uh, he lays his verse. I didn't hear his verse yet. The next day I come back to the studio. I want to hear his verse. And your man is calling me a nasty yeah. fuck and all that. You's a nasty fuck making a song talking about your nuts. I'm like, yo, bro, you told me. He said, nah, twin, they're going to they gonna love it, twin. They're going to, and he wasn't, you know, and I always tell this story. I tell it the same exact way. He wasn't lying. I sang that shit in arenas for 60, 70,000 people, right? And never in my little young mind when I was writing that song 
did I think that I was going to have 60, 70,000 people singing about my dick. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's pretty amazing. You know, um, good times, man. Yeah. So it seems to say your dick went platinum balls. My dick went platinum. <laughs> uh, I want to play a little fact of fiction with you, Tony. Right. Um, and, and and I'm sorry if there's any repetitive uh, rhetorical questions nah, in let's here. Go. But, uh, you know, Boom Bap Nation, they'll kill me if I don't ask these questions. All right. Fact of fiction, uh, Capone Noriega, T-O-N-Y instrumental was for you. That's fiction. Because I've heard this like a few times. No, nah, that's, that's, that's fiction. I've heard this a few times. That's fiction. Um, well, well you, you went on the, the record, but that was way after um, it dropped. Like Went on what? the record as fuck. No, like you explain like to me. What do you mean? I think you did like a freestyle on that record, right? Yeah. Nah, that's Capone and Nori's record. Of mm -hmm. course, it's a legendary record. We all know. Yeah. The legendary guys. Um, New York Giants. Uh, I think that Joe and them were trying to match my energy and understand what, what I was trying to do. And so, you know, uh, Macho came up Macho actually came up with the idea of remaking the record. Capone and Nori's T-O-N-Y because mm -hmm. my name was Tony. Tony. So T-O-N-Y, which was a pretty witty idea. Mm -hmm. um, cool and Dre went into the studio and reproduced the Capone and Nori T-O-N-Y beat. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so the version you're on is a remake, like literally like the instrument. It's a legitimate remake. remake. It's remake. a legitimate record. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Um, I guess we used it as a white label back then. Record, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, records that were just put out for buzz, for, for buzz factors and things like that were called white labels. White labels yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think we put that out as a white label and, uh, that shit took a life of its own. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and so people started finally seeing my vision and Tone Sunshine, the wild boy was created. Mm -hmm. Cause let's be clear, I was, I've never been a wild boy. I want to clear that up here. I want to clear. I want to clear that up. Well, okay. Let me not say I've never been a wild boy. But the gangster killer persona that you've been portrayed, that I've been portrayed, has never been me. I'm, I, you know, my 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 legacy, if I if if so to speak, or 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 my my my. I don't come from running blocks mm -hmm. and selling crack and, 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 and going to war. You know what I'm saying? And, and I'm just a cat that was part of a legendary crew and inherited some things and I had to uphold and, 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 and do some things. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But in, in no shape, form, or fashion do I want to portray or, or pretend or make people feel like I'm dragging on to this coattail, this gangsteristic killer persona, because I'm not that. People that know me personally know I'm an everyday humble individual. I'm down to earth. Yeah. Um, very respectful, very honorable. Just don't play with me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Don't play with me. But other than that, this, 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 this big bad wolf shit, I'm not trying to portray that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, because... If 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 I pretended to be that guy, I'd be a whole fucking liar. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, there's it, that. Could that be because um, a lot of drama has surrounded the brand of Terror Squad? Like, you know, I mean, everyone knows about the Woo Kid incident, right? So this is like kind of like known, right? <laughs> this is known, and and, and Woo Kid has said it himself. So we're not talking anything that, that people nah, don't know. Nah, but listen, look. But look, did, but that, does this follow so you? So I say around? that I say that I I want to say this. Um, what I'm saying, I'm saying that I don't want to glorify that side of me. Okay, it's that not who sense. I am. Mm -hmm. I've done some things and I've been part of some things because I had to, mm -hmm. not because I want to glorify it or mm -hmm. I, you know. So when 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 you're my brother, that's why we talking about this shit. Yeah, we of course, family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We we have history and we've worked yeah. together and we've done some things together. So, you know, I'm comfortable with speaking to you. Mm -hmm. But certain interviewers, they get frustrated with me because I don't I this when you interview me, I'm not talking about no beef shit. Yeah, yeah. I'm not giving you details. I'm not mm -hmm. giving you the time of day. I'm not telling you about the hand. I, that's not what I do. Yeah. 
You know what I'm saying? So don't don't and, and, and just to be clear for the people watching, this is not like coming from a negative page. This is like brother to brother, just like hip hop. No, yeah, of course. You're doing, you're, you're doing your job. Yeah, hip hop you, conversation. You're, you're yeah. doing your job, you're mm -hmm. doing your due diligence, and, and I respect that. I just wanted to clarify that. You know what I'm saying? Cause sometimes I got dudes in my DM be like, ah, oh, nigga, you wasn't built like that. You wasn't outside. You damn right, nigga, mm -hmm. but you never pulled up on me and smacked me, nigga. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's all I'm trying to say. I wasn't, I wasn't, um, I don't want to be the guy to lie on my dick mm -hmm. all the time and portray this thing that I wasn't. So, you know, I'm a guy that don't play no game. Don't play with me. You know what I'm saying? But in no shape, form, or fashion do I come from a place where I was out there slinging my hammer and killing niggas and, yeah. you know what I'm saying, uh, 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 pumping bricks and, you know, no, oh, I'm a kid that come from the projects. I come from the bottom. I come from a legendary crew. I seen some things. I did some things that I had to do. You know what I'm saying? But other than that, I'm a regular guy like everybody else. You know what I'm saying? I'm a pretty boy. That's it. I'm a pretty boy. I like to get money. I like to do fly shit. Just don't play with me. You know what I mean? Don't play with me. And that's it. Yeah. Uh, Tony, you've been on some amazing records, um, and obviously a lot of people know who Tony Sunshine is, but who is the most famous person that you ever met that you couldn't believe that they actually knew that who you were? Like, there has to be somebody, like, that you got around, he was like, wait, you know Tony Sunshine? Because, like, I, I'll give you an example. I was at uh, Sirius XM, and I see Mike Piazza from the Mets. Okay. Hall of Fame catcher. Okay. So he sees me. And he knew who to him and, was. And, and, and he's like, I'm a day what's up? But he does not know me from Sirius XM. He knows me from selling nutcrackers on National Geographic. You the one that sells the quarter waters. I'm like, oh shit, you know me? Round plus myself. You know me from That's National Geographic. <laughs> 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 Wait, you know me. <laughs> um It's been so many. You know what I'm saying? It, it's been so humbling, you know. Um it's been so many great of the greats that, you know. I come around and they know who I am and it's flabbergasting, but something that touched my heart and something that 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 will always stand out to me was excuse me. I'm at home one day. I'm laying at home and you know, I think my daughter my daughter was just like uh five, six, maybe seven years old. Around that time. Uh it's around the Jimmy's Bronx Cafe times. I get a phone call about 2 o'clock in the morning. They say the great DMX is looking for me. DMX? Yeah, I had never met DMX in person before. This is the first time I'm meeting DMX, first time I'm having a conversation with him. You know, this is DMX. This is this is lit. This is on top of the fucking globe. DMX. You know, ribs is touching, so yeah. don't make me yeah. wait. Yeah. Fuck around. You know, and so... I'm like... Fuck out of here. Like, yo, DMX is looking for you. He wants you to pull up. So, of course, what I'm going to do? Pull up, of course. I yeah. got to pull up. And, and, and it was actually the great, late, legendary DMX looking for Tone Sunshine. He had to meet the kid that was singing on Pun's records. Mm. He had this idea. He want to fly me to Cali. And we going to Cali. We doing this. We doing that. You know, I spent like two and a half hours with them. He made me drink all kinds of honey. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He cried with me. He, and he's cried, he cried on my shoulder. He, you know, all kinds of shit. He prayed. He, and um, he kept his word. And two weeks later, he flew me out to Cali. And I was out there in Cali with him. And, you know, we vibed out. Went to the studio. We recorded the record. Record was fire. Uh, due to politics and shit like that. Def Jam was having with, 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 with another company. They ain't clear the record. Yeah. And so I remember uh, X coming to see me personally because he wanted me to know that he really wanted the record to come out and he really wanted to fuck with the record. But the shit, the funny shit, he was like, uh, I love you because when I extend my hand, I extend the right one. Not the left one, the left jam. <laughs> left jam. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He said like left jam, <laughs> or whatever. You know, but while he had me in Cali, you know, they, he 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 again, 
again, I was just like a, a young kid coming up in the game and, you know, uh, Pun's protege, Fat Joe's protege. Not too many people really knew who I was. We just coming up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just just people are just starting to hear me on 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 pun joints and terror squad hooks and shit like that and so forth. Somebody like DMX to pull up looking for me. Yeah. That's a legendary situation. They took me to Cali, treated me like a king. They gave us a Benz to drive and you know, every day they would knock on the door with like a pound of weed. You know what I'm saying? Money to spend mm -hmm. and shit like that. And so that was super legendary. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, no that was super dope. Also, here in the Infamous Hour, we have a segment where we do top five um, picks. We've done top five fast food sandwiches. Which, by the way, the top five fast food sandwiches is actually the most watched episode of the Infamous Hour of all time. <laughs> to the refrigerator. Sha Boogie. Top five hip-hop sandwiches is actually the most watched top episode five, so top five of oh, fast food sandwiches, not hip hop sandwiches. Oh, top five yeah. fast food sandwiches is actually the most watched episode of my show. Okay. Seriously, right? So here on the Infamous Hour, we're going to do another top five segment. Tony Sunshine, your top five hip hop albums of all time. Go for it. And you got a lot of pressure because I just got Max B's top five hip hop. Mom yes, the murder <laughs> music. Murder music. One. Damn, I want to be generic. These are my like my real. Bad, yeah. These are my real the like real, the real joints. Yeah. This is what I was listening to. The real joints. <laughs> you got mob deep murder music. I got it. I just don't want to sound generic. No, but you just say it. It's your list. It's, it's, it's up to you know. It's, the Nas. It's, it was written. It, oh, it was written over Illmatic. 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 I, I like it was written. I'll better. take both. I like it was written better. I'll take both. Okay, both. All right, so we'll I'll get two both. for one special. So so you know how, you know, Nas, Nas is like, not to sound generic, but he is my favorite rapper in the universe. Yeah, he's mine too. Yeah, so. Him and Pac. Him and Pac. Yeah. That's a good choice. Him and Pac. I actually got Pac over Nas. It depends on what we're talking about. If we're talking about lyrics, it's Nas. But if we're talking about like overall artists, it's Pac. So they, they, they flop one and two, depending on what we're talking about. Okay, so we got Murder Music, Illmatic, and... I can name uh, my brother? Of course. All right, so Capital Punishment for sure. That's capital three. Punishment over here, baby. Okay. So um, so we got Murder Music, we got Illmatic, we got It Was Written, and we got Capital Punishment. And then All Lies On Me. All Lies On Me. Double CD. Sure. Classic. Classic. So, so Tom, we're live right now, facebook.com slash Nation. For people listening on radio, you're going to watch this on my Instagram. We are scanning the chat for comments and questions. And I'm almost certain that when, we, when, when people see this, they're going to want to know why we're not getting more Tony Sunshine music, right? Because we do have a resurgence of people putting out a lot of music, right? I was just telling Los this yesterday on the beach. I'm like, Tony, got to drop. Yeah, Stop yeah, cuffing yeah, the yeah, music. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Tony, got to drop now. Papoose, you know, AZ, um, even I, I interview Cannabis. He's dropping every month. So why are we not getting a lot of a lot more Tony Sunshine records? So you know, um, I'm sort of like a music hoider, bro. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, I'm such a perfectionist that I'm one of those guys that I have to be told, so, "Yo, bro, you good? You killed that." Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because if nobody taps me on the shoulder and tells me, "Yo, that's ready to go." Mm -hmm. I'll just listen to it a hundred times and be like, yo, I got to fix this. Mm -hmm. This got to go. Oh, shit, let me do this over. Mm -hmm. That note wasn't right. And so, you know, I'll sit on my music to where now uh, it's just dated. Mm -hmm. It becomes okay. dated. Okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? saying? And mm -hmm. once it becomes dated, I'm conscious that it's dated. And I'm like, you know, this is not ready. This is not a go anymore. So I put that to the side and I'll still record. So I'm one of those guys that got thousands and thousands and thousands of songs in my archive. Mm -hmm. And then there's the no support factor. Okay. I'm one of those guys that feel like this record is so hot and mm -hmm. it's so fire, but if I put a bag in it, it's just going to be a loss because I don't got a support system. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Due to the fact that... <laughs> <laughs> due, due to all the bullshit I got to in the past, you know, yeah. and things like that. So, you know, I'm one of those guys. I'm, always, I'm a thinker and I'm always in my head and I'm always, you know... In, trying to figure out my best route as far as my music goes. Mm -hmm. You know, um, 
I think I found a direction I want to go finally. You know what I mean? Some that makes sense for my age group and some that makes sense for me. You know what I mean? Because the last thing I want to do is seem like the OG that's trying. Yeah. Or the OG that's trying to fit in or, 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 or the OG that's following trends. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that's yeah. the same thing. So I yeah. never want to be that guy. So that's why I'm always dropping something that's kind of different. I'm never trying to follow trends, mm -hmm. but at the same time, stay true to me. Mm -hmm. so sometimes when I play shit for people, they be like, yo, that's dope. That sounds like uh, some Drake shit. That sounds like some, I don't like that neither because mm -hmm. I'm like, well, how about that sound like some Tone Sunshine shit because I've been doing this shit for 20 years. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, people always compare something new they see or hear to something that they know. Yeah, that'll shut me down immediately. Yeah, like people always say I sound like Kiss. I don't sound like him. Right. I sound like me. He sounds like himself. You got a certain, you have a certain. Baritone. You, you have a certain tone in yeah. your voice. Yeah. I, I me, me now knowing you personally and listening to your music all the time and shit like that, I can tell the difference. But to the consuming ear and a mm. brand new fan that doesn't know any mm. better, the first thing they're going to think is that. Till, till they take the opportunity to actually listen to the music and mm. become a real fan. Mm. And then they'll be like, oh, these guys are different. Yeah. You know what a I mean? Absolutely. You know, I think this would be a, a great time um, to talk to some of the young, inspire, uh, aspiring journalists. Because okay. uh, you mentioned something before about, you know, people asking... Like questions that are repetitive, um, people doing things for clickbait. And I actually had this experience literally with cannabis, right? Cannabis doesn't do interviews. It literally took me a year to get cannabis to get on the on Legendary. the infamous hours. I got him on the infamous Legendary. hour. And you know, he, he was just happy that I was just I just wanted to talk hip hop. Like I, I didn't want to talk about nothing else. Like I had sugar free on the show. He, he's another guy. West Coast people. He was happy you ain't asking no LL questions. Nothing. No LL. Mind you, I'm on a station with Eminem. I mean, they had like you know drama. We're not talking about none of that. Same thing with Sugar Free. Sugar Free's a known pimp. You watch Vlad. It's nothing about pimping hip hop. Like, what advice would you have to like the young bloggers, uh, the young radio people about just doing a good interview, right? Because a lot of people watch this shit. They're like, you know, if like you ask these, you're not asking drama questions, but I don't have to. Well, this I think I think I think that we again we caught up we caught up in a crazy era. You know what I'm saying? The drill era, the this mm -hmm. era, that, that era, and a lot of these bloggers and a lot of these interviewers are young. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And so controversy sells. Mm -hmm. So they think to themselves that the first thing they got to get into is some 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 bullshit. Mm -hmm. You know, it's important to make the artist feel is it when, when I do an interview the more comfortable you make me feel, the better you make me feel, the more you're going to get out of me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But if I sit in the chair and you just trying to make me seem like this big bad wolf, this bad guy that just got beef with everybody, and all you want to know is about my past tense uh, adversities, mm -hmm. then what are we doing? You're not making me look great. You're not, you're not motivating me to be a greater artist and a greater individual. You're bringing me back to a dark place again. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And for those people that haven't seen that side of me, you're bringing that shit to the light. You know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, it's important to make an artist feel great. Make yeah. him feel good. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Point out his great his great attributes. Point out his great points. You know what I'm saying? Ask him questions that's going to that's, that, that's bring him to a great place, and he might just open up to you and give you what you want. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Again, you and I have been in the same room more than four or five dozen times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've broke bread. We've been in different places together. Mm -hmm. We've done shows together. We've done videos. Mm -hmm. So I'm comfortable with you. We could talk about anything. Mm -hmm. But I just can't sit in a chair with just anybody or do a phone interview and just open up to you and I'm going to tell you about my beef with son and tell you what happened down the block. And yo, you know, so bring us to that time where the police pulled up and you know the... Yeah. I got to go, bro. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs>